Rocha, and I am president of AFSME, the Public Employees Union. And I'm having a press conference today on February the 8th, Wednesday at 12 noon, with members from the Austin Community Television Board of Directors and producers who are members of ACTV and supporters of ACTV. We're coming to you today in a press conference to give you information about some innovative, creative new ideas that ACTV is bringing to the public. We are going to be announcing, ACTV will be announcing, a proposal for a request for two new public access television channels, which will bring you more information and more public access television service, you as citizens of Austin. We will also be announcing some information about utilization of the remaining access channels that the cable company has pledged to provide to the citizens of Austin. And we will also be announcing a new, exciting Austin music channel. And these are the ideas we'll bring you today. The reason that AFSME is co-chairing co this, uh, pub this uh, public service announcement to you, this press conference, is because we are also representatives of some of the employees at ACTV. We represent them as union members, union representatives. We are also public service employees. People at ACTV serve the public. So we're interested in public service and bringing you the ultimate highest quality service possible in public access television, as well as city of Austin employees and county employees. We are also very concerned, the union, the employees union, is very concerned with public access television because that's the way that we can get our message out to you, the Austin community, about what we're doing, how we can save money, what we can do to serve you better. And public access allows us to do that uh, without great expense and hardship. So these are the types of reasons that we're coming to you today. The reason that we'd like to give you a little more information is many people don't understand the process by which you get services from the cable company uh, because it's a promise, it's a part of a franchise contract that the cable company made to the citizens of Austin. Through their franchise contract that allows them to use our public right-of-ways that we the citizens own, they in turn reciprocate, they pay you back, they pay us back by giving us many types of special services, one of which happens to be public access channels on cable TV that you can use, you as the public, to get your message out, whatever it might be. Um, this is a very important service because up to now, we've been able to air a lot of quality programming, but we still have many channels reserved that the cable company has not given us. And we are coming forward now and asking for those channels. The way that you ask for it is, uh, an entity, a citizen, uh, a group like ACTV will go to the Cable Commission, your representative on uh, for City Council. The Cable Commission looks at the requests, deems whether or not it's appropriate. They go to City Council. They say, Council, this fine group needs public access channels to serve the people, and we hereby recommend that you ask the cable company to come forward and deliver its promise in the franchise contract. And that's what we're doing now. We're starting that process. So to explain to you the, the details of this process and what we're going to do, first I would like to introduce Mr. Ronnie Mack, who is a vice president on the AFSME Public Employees Union Board of Directors. And he is also on the ACTV Board of Directors. He serves as well uh, in that capacity. He is an advocate of the Austin Music Channel and has worked uh, many years in the music industry and is presently a, an employee of the city of Austin, Ronnie Mack. Thank you, Maria. Um, I'm here this afternoon to address the subject of an Austin music channel on public access television. Right now, this is just in the idea stage, but we believe it may be an idea whose time has come. An Austin music channel, as conceived by ACTV, would be a non-commercial video music channel on Austin Cablevision that's focused on all aspects of Austin music. As a public access channel, it would be managed by ACTV and structured to serve Austin musicians, access television producers, music businesses, and the cable TV subscribers. To give you a little background on how this issue arose and this idea has come into being, um, within ACTV, I think this idea has been discussed now frequently since uh, 
at least last year about the time of the South by Southwest video fest on ACTV, which we believe was an excellent example of kind of a mini music channel in that it had four days of more or less continuous music focusing on local and alternative music across the country. Uh, also inside the Cable Commission, there are discussions now at the com several committee in several committees of the Cable Commission about the possibility of a music channel. And in particular, at the last meeting, they were discuss discussing the possibility of uh, releasing a request for a proposal or an RFP uh, to uh, to look at uh, creating a music channel on Austin Cable Vision. In addition to this, going back a little further, Austin Plan. Uh, there's discussions and proposals inside Austin plan to designate a cultural arts or music channel on Austin Cable Vision. Also discussed is the possibility of cable casting alphanumeric or computer generated music and arts calendar or information on our cable TV system. And then lately, the music district proposal, one of the recommendations there was for, to use, again, alphanumeric music listings, and this was seen as to be PSAs on Channel 6, but nonetheless a focus on music. And, of course, recently you might have mentioned, I think there was a mention in the uh, Austin Chronicle of a music channel. Uh, ACTV's plan to uh, address this need and idea is to begin today a feasibility study for utilizing a portion of our public access resources to support an Austin Music Channel. The study will de be developed through ACTV's grassroots outreach program that's aimed at musicians and producers and live music venues and music industry associations and commissions that exist and, and, and generally the community at large. Our rationale for this is that ACTV recognizes that there exists perhaps a window of opportunity to better promote and develop Austin music through the use of television. And it appears the necessary resources are available through our cable television franchise to support this effort. You might wonder how we intend to go about this. Basically, ACTV's approach is to consider utilizing the following resources to support a music channel on public access television. One of the first items would be to designate a prime access channel from those available that Maria mentioned earlier and designate this for music. Also we can incorporate into the design of the new central access studio the capability for quality music video production and post production. We believe that we should connect the live, most or all of the live music venues to INET for live origination capability. We believe that uh, we should continue and expand the use of uh, Austin Cable Vision's Master Control Center to, uh, for the videotape playback and the INET signal switching that would be necessary to uh, bring, our, bring the cable subscribers to programming. We need to look into upgrading our existing portable telev television production systems so that they're capable of these live music shoots from remote locations. Uh, we intend to uh, utilize the cadre of active access TV producers who now produce programs on ACTV and who could probably produce more and better programs once this objective was uh, targeted. And finally, we believe that to hold all this together, that ACTV as public access manager would need to probably expand its services for equipment and facilities management training programming and promotion areas and fundraising areas. Uh, we believe there's quite a number of issues to be studied here and, and considered with the community's input and all those involved. They tend to fall in a couple of categories. Those functional issues that have to do with ACTV's ability to deliver service like programming, production, promotion, training. On the other hand, there's a whole list of policy issues that need to be looked at that have to do with public access and how we would fit this more or less uh, public and private type situation into public access and uh, without infringing on the commercial non-commercial lines. So there's a whole list of uh, policy issues too much to go in here today that need to be studied. And to kind of close on this, I want to remind you of the benefits that ACTV uh, anticipates <coughs> that the Austin Music Channel might bring if it proves feasible. Uh, first of all, uh, economic development of our music industry. We believe that uh, 
this increased uh, promotion and exposure of our Austin artists in the clubs that they play in will actually increase the club turnout. In fact, it might reestablish the kind of club hopping uh, reputation Austin had through the years of finding all of this outstanding music talent tucked away in all the clubs around Austin. We also believe that Austin musicians need promotion and publicity uh, outlet for their work, and we believe this would be uh, would would help. Also, uh, we believe this would accelerate the um, growth of the music infrastructure that people talk about around here, especially in the area of video production, which needs to be seen as part of music. Um, another area is tourism. If you look at this from a television <coughs> perspective, you'll see that actually a Austin Music Channel hooked to an INET is more or less an electronic music district. It doesn't really have a geographical boundary other than where the INET could reach as this appears on your TV. And that if a Austin Music Channel was in our homes, in the hotels, and eventually perhaps connected to satellite, uh, this would draw tourists. And uh, in fact, the music industry may be our best mu uh, draw for tourism. Another benefit we identified is a competitive advantage that Austin would have over other music centers. Um, we, if uh, Austin allows to, is allowed to take advantage of its two most plentiful natural resources, music and public access television, and if we can marry these things together, uh, I think you'll see that uh, television has had a huge impact on the music industry in the last few years, and there's no reason to believe that that won't increase into the future. Um, artist development. Uh, I think that was one thing that's been cited all along, that local musicians need opportunities to have access to television production capability in order to advance their careers, especially in a low-cost manner. And the product that comes out of access television can range from a showcase performance such as the Bad Mother Goose video that Tim put together for the France show, all the way to some more experimental forms of creative expression. They're all there on Access. And let me wind up with just reminding you that, that award-winning programs on Access TV and on Austin Music brings notoriety and increases our reputation and that <coughs> draws attention to Austin and that, in fact, right now, uh, five of the ten best music TV shows, um, as identified by the Austin Chronicle 1988 music poll, were public access programs. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. The concept of promoting our music industry through a music channel uh, is not brand new to Austin. ACTV has had a labor of love with music for the past 16 years. And to tell you a little bit about what ACTV <coughs> has done for the music industry, I'd like to introduce Alan Bouchon. Alan has been the executive director of ACTV for a while now, and he has brought to ACTV a great many new types of planning devices, uh, organization, and very innovative creative thinking, such as the music channel. And I would like to turn it over to Alan. Thank you, Maria. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, as executive director, I want to applaud the ACTV Board of Directors for visionary planning regarding access channels. It's um, very appropriate because we have a very visionary cable franchise. I want to remind people that it's important for us to use all of the access provisions of our franchise now, not only so our community has the greatest benefit, but so as we enter uh, negotiations for a new cable franchise, that the cable operator, there will be a reason to request the same additional resources from the cable operator. Um, I also want to state that I think that Austin Cable Vision and our cable viewers deserve the fullest use of the access resources that are currently available. Um, let's examine the leadership role that the ACTV board has taken. And first of all, I want to remind you that ACTV is Austin's public access pioneer and that ACTV has provided 15 years of continuous service. That's one of the reasons why Austin is a model and one of the leaders of access in the United States. Um, let's take a look at what ACTV has done in the past. ACTV has played a pivotal role in developing access channels both before our current franchise and during the franchise. If you remember when Capital Cable was a cable company, ACTV began uh, cable casting programs on Channel 10 during duplicate broadcast time, and we had both the San Antonio network affiliates and the Austin network affiliates on cable. 
Um, during that time, we tablecast public access programs, including some ACC and AISD programs from Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday and Saturday night, we replayed the tapes of city council meetings. With a new franchise and greater access assets and more channels, AISD spun off their own channel. Um, a, a year later, ACC began managing Channel 19 and playing back their telecourses. ACTV added channels 32 and 33 to Channel 10, Channel 32 prim primarily for our very valuable religious public access programming, and Channel 33 to provide producers the opportunity to conduct promotional showcases and to provide live programs to the Austin community. Since then, the city has brought Channel 6 online with live municipal programming and recorded municipal programming, and ACTV has also assisted Travis County in bringing Channel 38 online, so we now have Travis County government accessible to cable viewers. We've worked hard to help put eight channels online during the franchise to date. What will we do in the remaining seven and a half years? Once again, I want to point to ACTV's visionary plan to to bring online the remainder of the assets and to bring on these five channels. And there is a current need. We've had dramatic growth of public access programming, over 60% in the last year since new production equipment was placed in service. And this production equipment was placed in service as a result of the uh, City of Austin negotiating with Austin Cablevision after rejecting Austin Cablevision's um, request to modify the cable franchise. ACTV's current proposal would add a public access channel to relieve our currently crowded channels and would add a preview channel in which we could provide promotion to all public, educational, and government access programming. Public access television producers have chronicled the development of Austin music in specific, or in particular, uh, in, in its many different aspects for the past 15 years. As Ronnie Mack stated, ACTV is very interested in furthering the development of music programming on the public access channels. Many of the earliest public access programs showcased Austin and Central Texas musicians often well before the commercial notoriety. That trend continues to this day. Tim Buck III was featured on a public access program over a year before their Grammy nomination. Every type of music for every type of audience has been shown on public access channels gospel, rock, punk, classical, folk, progressive, country, all types of music. And many local artists such as Jerry Jeff Walker, Beto Los Fairlanes, Joe Ely, Bad Mother Goose, The Reavers, and Joe King Crosco, just to name a few, have appeared on the public access channels. From clubs such as the Armadillo World Headquarters, Rowell's, Club Foot, The Beach, the Austin Opera House, almost all clubs and all musicians at one time or another have been on the public access channels. Our current programs include Citizens Live, an hour and a half program on Saturday night produced by Dean Langston, which provides a variety of music uh, groups. Uh, gospel music programming, which Elmer Akins has brought from KVET Radio to public access. Uh, Robert Rodriguez has brought a series live from Austin, Tejas, uh, featuring local Tejano bands and a variety of Austin clubs. Scott, per Scott Spurlock is a producer, has compiled music videos. And Texas Music has featured local bands live from the studio on Wednesday nights. That mentions just a few of the uh, music programs that have been on public access. And as music programming has grown, ACTV has sought to assist uh, producers with their promotion of programming by forming blocks of music programming primarily on Friday and Saturday night so viewers could tune into the channel for the entire evening. Uh, ACTV currently has a proposal for public access producers to have access to the institutional network, which will allow live programming to be generated from uh, clubs all over and locations all over Austin. ACTV wants to hear from the public. We have called for and we continue to call for a long-range cable franchise planning process involving you, the viewers, and the Austin public. If possible, it would be good for us now to turn the microphone around so you'd have an opportunity to talk. Um, that's one way that we would have to thank the Austin community for its support of public access. Thank you. Maria? Thank you, Alan. Of course, a good way for you to turn the mic around and talk to us is to go to your cable commission meeting and speak in favor of utilizing your public access services. Uh, as Alan has shown you, there have been a number of, of very uh, innovative, very wonderful music groups that have come to, uh, to you through uh, public access television. And with us today is an outstanding example of this type of video producer. I'm very fortunate to be um, uh, here with Mr. Tim Hamblin. He is an independent video producer. 
He's also on the ACTV Board of Directors. Uh, but Mr. Hamlin has a list of outstanding credentials that he has uh, received uh, awards through public access television and music. He is um, the present video coordinator of South by Southwest which is a music festival, 1989. Uh, he will be the video coordinator for last year's South by Southwest. He won an award. Uh, he is also an award winner for Vidiot's Choice, the program. Uh, he has won awards at the Toronto Film Festival. <clears throat> he has also recently won some outstanding acclaim for his production of uh, Bad Mother Goose's uh, video, uh, Jump the Funk. And we are very fortunate that he's here with us today, helping us to present to you the idea of the Music Channel of promoting public access television. Mr. Tim Hamblin. Uh, thank you. Um, sounds great. Maybe uh, one day I'll make some money doing this. Um, yeah, first I must apologize. Uh, I've uh, had flu for a while, so I'm not uh, feeling that great. But I still had to come because the idea of the music channel is something that has been spoken about for quite a while with uh, different producers. Um, and it's obviously an exciting thing. Um, uh, the fact that we actually did a music channel last year with regards to South by Southwest where we programmed four continuous days, not totally continuous, but four days of programming from numerous local producers from all over the region, from all over the country, and even uh, from Europe. So that was a great challenge and a great success that was fairly well received. And the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole list of everything was in the uh, statesman that gave, that gave us a good start for people to see exactly what was going on. Um, Austin has been known as a music mecca for uh, many years now. Um, I first heard about it in the uh, West Indies when I was working there, and that's how I ended up here. Um, but the interesting thing is now it's, it's gradually becoming known as a, a video, video and TV center uh, due to the great public access facilities. Um, it, obviously, we have uh, our uh, major leader in the market, Austin City Limits, has, has brought the city to national prominence on the airwaves and uh, opened the doors for uh, numerous things. But now uh, the access community is producing so much stuff, and due to the fact that we're getting better equipment, being able to produce slightly more competitive stuff, even though there's no budget for anything, uh, the potential is amazing. Uh, there are just so many producers, each with their individual style, that we're now developing an incredible archive of, of music from, well, of our musical heritage. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the problems with the uh, producing music uh, here is funding. Uh, that's why it's somewhat disturbing when uh, we find that the cable commission is recommending cutting the access budget when we really need to increase it. And it's kind of ironic that music producers are struggling to uh, buy tapes to produce their shows, uh, and yet we have a commission that is voted to spend 12000 on a newsletter. Um, this is somewhat frustrating for the uh, public access uh, producers who could have bought a hell of a lot of tapes for that. Um, as I said, the South by Southwest uh, video festival gelled a lot of the music video community here and brought a lot of regional and national prominence both from record companies and from other producers. And we have the, now have the potential of developing that into a major video festival that can be internationally known. Um, so the, f the fact that we can do it at all is incredible. The fact that we want to keep doing it is, is important and we want to expand is important. Uh, one of the problems is, is, is getting 
getting people to understand exactly how programs are made and what it costs and why things don't look like MTV because uh, the average MTV budget of 60 or 70,000, I mean, the budget of ACTV could probably make six music videos and their yearly budget. So that'll give you some idea of why some of the stuff doesn't look exactly like MTV, which is a great thing because it's real live music, a lot of it. Um, the fact that the whole music community is is interested in in video is it's fairly obvious, and it's also great to know that we have a mayor who is particularly interested in in music. Uh, I've been to the uh, new music seminar in New York for six or seven years now, and about three years ago, when Lee Cook was heading the chamber, um, they sponsored a trip up there with a delegation, where we had an Austin booth, we put out an Austin tape, and I produced two hours of Austin video that was aired in at the New Music Seminar, and it was kind of heartening to walk into the seminar on a Monday morning and see the true believers on all the screens around the, the, uh, the conference. So music video does have an effect, and it's continuing to have an effect. There's obviously a major just by seeing this Chronicle uh, video register. There, there's numerous production outlets here, and it's increasing all the time. Um, so, what else is there to say? Uh, I was, I did want to show something to kind of, uh, and I couldn't, I looked through a bunch of tapes that I have done, and I was thinking, well, maybe I should show Charlie Sexton at 13 when he's playing with Joe Ely, or maybe Ray Campy, or maybe Blaze Foley, uh, who unfortunately isn't with us now. Um, there are so many bands that I've taped and other people have taped that the list is endless. Uh, so to avoid confusion and maybe to inspire a few people, uh, I've got a tape that's ready to roll and in fact, isn't an Austin band, but it was a band that was touring in Austin in 1982 that I recorded with a funky home camera, um, and they're called the Bangles, so you may be interested in seeing this from Clubfoot in 1982. Yeah, that was something that I thought was interesting because it's kind of an inspiration that uh, the Bangles before makeup. Um, that this is the kind of stuff that is available here and that has been done for many years and is going to be continue to be done. And hopefully, with the support of the city uh, in terms of the council and the music commission and everything else, we can continue to do this and develop Austin and the music community here and basically just keep on having Austin as a great place to live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hamlin. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hamlin spoke to you about 
the musical archives that have been uh, built up over the years. And next I will introduce a man who has his own archive. Um, he's well known as having produced uh, a numerous videos, music videos. He's, um, I think the last figure we had is last year uh, he videotaped over 180 Austin musicians at live music venues throughout Austin. So this prolific um, creative video producer is with us. Uh, he is a past, um, he was a past member of the board of directors. He's not currently on. Uh, Mr. Hank Sinatra. Thanks, Maria. Um, my interest in being here today is, uh, of course, the music channel, and I feel like we have a music channel. We've had it for several years, and uh, we just need to expand on it. One of the problems I'm seeing right now is several different people are trying to get control of this music channel. I would like CACTV to be the people who have it because uh, they've been serving me well for the past several years, and I'd like to see them continue to do that. The thing we do need is more money. Um, I foresee the city putting out another budget, maybe equal to the one we have now, just to cover the music channel. If they'd give us another half a million dollars, we'd be in real good shape. Um, I'm very afraid of this thing being controlled by uh, any commercial people here in town because all of a sudden they would pick out what would be on the air. They would decide uh, whether or not it was a popular song or not, whereas ACTV doesn't really care about the popularity of it. They're more interested in showing the art that happens here in Austin. And uh, I think if we lose that, we lose a very valuable commodity for the city. And uh, I know uh, my friend Lee Cook isn't interested in losing any of this music, and uh, I feel the same way. So I basically came here just to state the fact that I, uh, I'm behind ACTV 100%, and uh, I believe if there is a, quote, music channel, uh, that they should be the people to manage it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I appreciate that. To wrap up, uh, give you a summary, we are basically bringing you information about public access television, about the fact that your cable company does still owe you several channels that you, the citizens of Austin, can use, can utilize in any way possible. Austin Community Television, ACTV, is planning aggressively to try and make sure that those channels are available to you by requesting to now so that we can move forward with this music uh, television channel. Uh, also by bringing forward a preview channel that can give you a list of public access shows that are on and you can see through your video screen uh, uh, that type of preview information. Uh, they also want to make sure that someone in the community advocates for you to make sure that the state, that uh, educational institutions, that, that other entities that need to use public access television get their chance at it. And that's the long-range plan that Alan Bouchon was talking to you about. So we will be bringing this proposal to the Austin Cable Commission. Those are the people that uh, are the right arm of the city council. They're supposed to be representing your point of view, the public. So you need to contact your Austin Cable Commission and tell them that you are strongly in support of public access television, of Austin community television and their efforts towards promoting the music channel, towards promoting uh, all kinds of public access resources for you. And I appreciate your listening and thank you very much. Oh, I am sorry. I almost forgot to introduce a final board member who was going to talk to you about uh, public access television. I'm so sorry, Mr. O'Leary. Um, Mr. O'Leary is a video producer of Russian Tour, and he is here also to give you more information on public access television. Thank you, Maria. Let me uh, just summarize the action that ACTV is taking at this time. Our board of directors has passed a five-point plan uh, relating to the future use of the access channels. And the first, plan, the first point is something, the first two are direct action that we're going to take right now. And we're going to take that action by submitting a proposal to the access committee of the cable commission on February 22nd. Uh, point number one is that we would like to activate a new cable access channel and place it on channel 34. We're taking this step because our current three channels are full in prime time, and for the reasons that have been mentioned so far up here, we are having a great growth in programming, so we need additional channel space now. 
So we're activating one channel now. We're asking activation of one channel now. Our second point is to activate a specialized type of access channel, which is called alphanumeric access, and it's called for in the cable franchise. This is a channel that will have a character generator that will tell what is on at any given time on all the other access channels. That's public, educational, and government. And it could possibly be used for other purposes, too. The third point is we feel that at this point, halfway through the franchise, we should address the complete utilization of the access resources throughout the balance of the franchise. So in addition to what we've already talked about, there are several other channels called for in the franchise. And we feel that this is the appropriate time to have a plan for the use of those channels. To be specific, we're saying of, there's four additional access channels that are general access channels. We're saying that we would like to see one reserve for educational purposes. Uh, this could be any of the educational, higher educational facilities in town who want public access. We're saying a second should be reserved for government. We gave as an example the state of Texas. Now, uh, as Alan mentioned earlier, traditionally we have helped groups form their own access channels. They get their initial training and orientation through us, put on some programs, we carry their programming, and at some point spin them off to their own channel. And we anticipate that we would like to continue doing this type of service to people. But at the same time as we spin people off, we want to also allow for future growth of public access programming. So we've also said we should set aside two additional public access channels for the future. In addition, there, is, uh, there are a couple of other types of access channels. There's one called addressable access, which we feel will be used by higher education facilities such as ACC or UT, and that's uh, similar to pay-per-view pay TV. And there's also something called leased access, which we don't have a plan for because we're in the free television business. Now, our fourth point just emphasizes what I said about outreaching to the community, about developing their own programming and conceivably their own channel if it so evolves. We created a community involvement committee this year at our board of directors, and we are charging them to reach out to the educational and government entities that may want uh, a future channel or present uh, presence on our current channels and also to culture and social service groups uh, the artistical music musical ethnic and other constituencies and the general public now our fifth point is uh, regarding these four future general access channels that we're not saying to activate now we believe we should be negotiating to place them in the 20s that is Number, number, uh, number 20 and so forth in the cable lineup uh, as was called for in the original franchise. So we believe the city should negotiate to uh, put these future channels in roughly this position. I believe that covers everything we're doing right now, so I'll turn it back to you, Maria. Thank you very much. Thanks. Question. Yes, Yeah, there are 13 access channels and then one addressable, or one alphanumeric access channel, I believe, are permitted by the franchise and required by the franchise. Currently, eight of those channels are activated. And of those eight that are activated, there's the city, the school district, and the county, and are the remaining five? The school district has two channels, Austin Community College, Travis County, and the city of Austin have one channel. And ACTV manages three channels, Austin Access channels 10, 32, and 33, on, on which we place a pu public access programming. So that's three, four, five, six. So there's two that are not? No. A I'm sorry. We manage, ACTV manages three channels, AISD two channels, and each of the other institutions manages one. Tell me the bottom line of what 
what you're what you want today and on what channel. I'm curious what would happen.